Whoa, hold your horses there, pal. I'm gonna assume you've already seen part one and you already know how to acoustically treat and do the best sound treatment possible for your recording space. If not, the link will be down below. Please, please, please watch and understand that first before we continue. Also, I highly, highly request you guys wear headphones so you get the full effect on knowing exactly what I'm talking about so you can distinctively hear the different sounds I'll be mentioning. With that said, let's get started. Hello again, my beautiful subscribers. It's great to see you as always. And for anyone that's new to the channel, it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. So as I mentioned towards the end of the part one video, today we are talking about ambient or unnecessary background noise in your vocal recordings. Now I'm gonna be frank with you guys. This is a really broad topic to talk about because there are multiple cases on what could be causing this unwanted sound. And because there are so many factors involved, the best we can do for you is at least make it a little better if we can't solve the problem. And because there's really no exact order on how to go about this, I'm just gonna go from least difficulty to the hardest solution on solving this problem for you. Now, for a lot of you guys that are here, I'm gonna assume you don't have too much experience working with audio, or you might've just purchased your first microphone and you're trying to just improve the overall quality of your video. And I gotta tell you, audio is one of my favorite things of all time. Yay, audio. So after treating your room the best way you could to eliminate all that access echo and everything like that, now we hit record. You think you sound good because of your microphone, but then you realize you got all this humming, buzzing, static. Now I'm gonna assume that one of these example sounds I'm about to play for you is occurring in your audio. Sound familiar? Hey, it's really common. Happens to all of us. Don't fret about it. Let's try to tackle this and solve this together. The first thing we need to check is where is your gain set at? What I mean is the gain knob or your preferences or settings inside your computer, uh, depending if you have a USB mic, to see exactly how much torque it's putting out while you're using it. Here's my rule of thumb when dealing with gain settings or volume output on a microphone or when using an audio interface. Uh, try to stick between 50 to 75%. For me, that's been the safest zone in my experience. However, it is gonna depend on what type of microphone you're using. Now, most of you will be using a condenser microphone and they don't necessarily need a lot of gain, just some phantom power and typically you're good to go. I don't see any reason whatsoever that your gain setting should be anywhere past the three o'clock position unless you just bought a cheap audio interface that wasn't designed to give out a lot of power. And if you're using a microphone like a Blue Snowball or a Blue Yeti, sometimes by default the computer's gonna have it to 75% or higher sometimes, tone it down. You don't need it that loud, and that's been a big cause that I've seen with a lot of people that have come to me with this problem. Now this one's an easy solution. How many electronics do you have running inside your recording space? Do you have a bunch of lights on? Do you have gaming consoles on? Do you have a big PC that you're not using with the microphone that is running? Is there a portable air conditioning unit? Do you have a mini fridge inside? I guarantee most of you have got at least one extra thing running in the room that's really not necessary. And yes, your smartphone could also be a cause of noise as well. Keep in mind that some microphones or even some cables have the tendency to pick up unwanted frequencies that are occurring from other electronics in your room. When I'm making YouTube videos, I've got a bunch of stuff running and that's okay because I'm just using this for YouTube content. But if I'm actually doing a recording for a client, it is dark in this room. And unfortunately, this will suck for a lot of people. You need to have the air conditioner and heater off. Believe me, Plenty of people, including myself, has spent quite a few summers sweating inside the booth because you need it to be dead quiet, especially if your microphone is not of the highest quality. The last thing that could be causing noise from electronic is the laptop or computer that you actually have your microphone plugged into. How loud is the fan running? Is it pretty distinct? This is a tough one to solve because there's a few ways you could look at it. One, you could get an attached cooling system for your laptop if you want to, which will help tone it down. If you have an extra computer, try plugging it in there. See if it doesn't need as much power in order to use your recording software. Now here is a really important factor. How are your cables? Now be honest with me. Did you buy really cheap 
cables. Now I am not bashing and saying that they're not gonna work and they could last for years, but there are some factors that could come into place here. Were you very careful when you were connecting with them? Or did you avoid making sure that you were not bending them all over the place? You actually tried to keep them as straight as possible. When you use cheaper cables, it can be a gamble if you're not taking very good care of them, because if not, you're gonna have a lot of similar cases as if you were to buy really cheap off-branded, uh smartphone cords or even headphones you know the ones that if you're lucky will even last a year uh that's why you got to be really careful not to twist or bend them a lot i can't tell you how many times people have solved the issue just by either switching out and trying different cables to see if that was a problem or just even buying brand new extra cables because it's a gamble sometimes if you decide to not be cautious with them I would definitely double check and make sure that your cables are straight and always have extras on hand. It's always helpful to make sure you can always switch them out to make sure that's not the cause. Another big tip I'm gonna highly request for you guys is to make sure all your studio recording equipment, if possible, try to have them use the same wall outlet. If you have them plugged into different ones, you could have a bad case of what is called ground looping, which would cause extra humming in your audio. That's a whole nother subject, but I'm just saying as a rule of thumb, try to keep everything sharing the same wall outlet. That could be actually one of your causes. Now this is a rare case, and that's because it's not gonna to apply to most of the people here. Uh, do you live in a really old house where all your wiring is really outdated? Could be a problem. And unfortunately, the only way to solve that problem is obviously you need to update your wiring, which costs a ton of money. There's really no easy fix, but at least it would give you an idea that that potentially could be the problem. Hey, it's better to at least be aware, even if you can't solve the problem, at least you know. Now here's an interesting factor, and this is gonna vary from person to person. What kind of equipment are you using? And this is what I mean by this. Is it cheap equipment? We know the old saying, you get what you pay for. Now this is a tip I thought I was gonna save for the next part in the series, but I think it's important I should mention it right now because it does kind of apply here. Referencing back to your gain and volume settings, when you are recording, are you using a DAW? Most common examples are gonna be Adobe Audition, Audacity, Reaper, etc. When you're testing your recording, either use monitor mode or just pre-record and check to see where your levels are at. Uh, which is the DB, AKA decibels. The first one I would mention is sometimes people just have their normal peak level sitting at exactly zero. Uh, I would recommend if you're having background noise and gain issues with the type of situation you're in, I would put your threshold down to about negative three or uh, even sometimes negative six DB, just to help it make it easier for you if you're dealing with sensitive equipment or background noise. My final one is finding your exact volume range or your actual average when you're recording. Everyone's got their preferences. This is my area on average to reach. All your audio, for me, I try to keep it between negative 12 dB to negative 18 dB. And this will be important uh, when we discuss this further down the road, but you need a good loud average. You don't need it skyrocketing all over the place. And it's just a great way to monitor it. That way you're not overstretching your equipment settings. Now, some of you may be thinking, oh my gosh, I need to eliminate all my background ambient noise for this to be perfect. This isn't true. I have ambient background noise in my recordings, but it's at such a low frequency threshold, it's so easy to eliminate in post-production. Once again, if you're able to monitor and see how loud your background noise is actually getting, Try to keep it no higher than negative 60, and that's stretching it for even me. But yeah, I think I'll end it at that. Well guys, I just wanna thank you so much for taking the time to hear me out and let me share with you my knowledge of what I know about how to make the best raw recording you absolutely can for your YouTube videos. In the next part of this series, I'm gonna be talking about the best recording techniques and habits and practices and even sometimes audio settings that you can have to help with your audio recordings. If you guys enjoy the content, you know, like, subscribe, notification bell, all that jazz, you guys know what to do. Uh, you know, it really helps if you do share it because this is just my gift to all you guys because I, I love helping people out. There's, it's amazing how much potential people are missing out on just what little things you can do to just skyrocket the quality of your content. If you guys ever have questions or concerns, you can always leave a question in the comments down below or follow me on Twitter. I also will be able to reach you guys through there. All right, I'm done rambling. Love y'all. I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.